very isolated in the beginning. I remember going on to the horse and wagon, the trap line, on like with my grandparents. So seeing the pristine beauty of Mother Earth and seeing the the way that my family interacted um, with the land. Um, so, and I really agree. What you do to the land, you do to yourself, and that was that's a very intrinsic part of. Uh, indigenous philosophy. So I think when I moved to the city, I saw something really different. Um, the way that people interact or didn't interact with the land that we have to walk on cement. And it started, it really disconnected me. But another thing that really politicized me into this work was that when I left our community, even though people lived very sustainably um, because of the policy, the governmental policies that really impacted our communities, um, a, a billions of dollars come out of our traditional territory in, ex in resource extraction from oil and gas. But very few of those resources ever actually go back to the communities. And so that's why my family still, you know, has no running water. There's there's a lot of housing issues. There's, a, there's no infrastructure in the community. There's the, like the one central building is like the school and that's made up of like makeshift trailers. Like there's there's extreme discrepancies and disparities between the way that urban settings, or the ur, like the urban, urban folks live and the way that our communities live. And that really politicized me as a young person because I was just like, I came to the city and I was like, whoa, what, they have like, there's books, there's like this, there's, there's like, it just, it was so overwhelming for me. And so I think that really made me understand kind of where I come where I came from and and kind of and seeing all of this and then like what what do I have to do what can I do who am I to not use the the education that I was um, privileged enough to receive who am I not to help my family and the last thing I would say was that my when my when I when we left the community my mom wanted to take us to get better education so we went to the neighboring town and then eventually we went to the city and I went to high school in the city and my grandparents were very upset because a lot of the people don't leave leave our community. Um, and so my grandmother was crying and she didn't want us to like leave and these are the sacrifices that you actually have to make. Um, and that's one of the things my mom chose to do. And, and my Muslim, my grandfather at the time, at the time said to her and some of my family members, which my aunt later told me actually, was that, well, they'll leave, but then they'll come back and they'll help our community, they'll help our family. And so I feel like that's something that keeps me um, grounded in what I do and why I do it. So. Yeah. Well, uh, growing up, both of my parents are actually they're professors of political science who study environmental policy. So um, this was always kind of a dinner table conversation. But um, I wasn't really an activist, I was just kind of someone who's interested in those sorts of issues, and frankly, they're terrifying issues. But um, I suppose if I had to pick one point, that I would have said that, um, it was a speech given by a university student at UBC, Gordon, I'm not sure his last name, and um, it was just about what we want our legacy to be. It was, you know, telling a story of, you know, someday, when I have kids, they're going to ask. They're going to ask either, how did you help fix this, or they're going to ask, what the hell are you thinking? And either way, I want to be able to say that I tried my very hardest. We're going to try to ask the question from Peel, right? Yeah, ask, use the mic and ask David, if David, ask if they have a question. Do you have a question in the classroom over there? Is there a question from the class in Peel? Yeah. 